Hello and welcome back to Sex, Brains and Money. I am here with my wonderful guest, Terry Jean Bedford, whose first book, Dominatrix on Trial, was the focus of the first interview that she did with us last year. And this time she's here to talk about her new book, yes. Bondage Bungalow Fantasies. Terry Jean, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me on, Nikki. Well, you know me. I, I'm happy to have you any time that I can. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what it was, uh, what the writing process was like and writing the book was all about. Wow, it's a, it's a very arduous undertaking. Mm -hmm. And without the help of editors and others, uh, I, I, it would have never come to fruition, but um, mm -hmm. it's quite a learning process and I really enjoyed it. And um, Bondage Bungalow Fantasies um, was conceived while writing uh, Dominatrix on Trial. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, this is the memoirs and this is sort of a continuation oh, okay. of the memoirs. Um, when I ran my uh, house in Thornhill, I had people submit letters and scripts that they wanted to act out, mm -hmm. and so that's how that all got started. Oh, so it's sort of like a compilation of all the interesting things that clients have written you and sent you over the years. Yes. It? Great. Well, it must have brought back a lot of memories for you. Didn't, were there any memories that stood out and things that uh, you know it inspired in your mind when you were writing it? when you're looking back on the, the letters and stuff? Yes, it was a wonderful time in my life. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it, uh, it taught me a lot about myself and, and others. Mm -hmm. And looking back over the letters, yes, there were some that brought back fond memories and I, I guess others that uh, made me wonder, you know, what this person might be up to today, where they could be because, you know, maybe the letter was so bizarre in, in context that you wonder what other manifestations may have been going on in that life. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I've become very attached to many people. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I'm glad that you had a chance to take that trip down memory lane and then put it together for us in a compilation. Well, yes. you said that you'd like to read an excerpt from your book and share that with the audience. Could you do that for us? Sure. Well, um, Nikki, I was, I guess I had over 300 letters wow. to start with. Mm -hmm. And we had to break it down into the best of the best. I'm sure it must have been so difficult we, we to really from, narrow them down, eh? We went from three down to two down to one. Mm -hmm. And the one I've chosen to read today is Cook Me. Cook Me? Ooh, yeah. well, that's interesting. Let's hear it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's one of the best ones. Um, let me just put my glasses on here of for course. a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... This extraordinary fantasy was given to me in my Thornhill house. Mm -hmm. As you know, Nikki, I don't know if you know, I had another house in downtown Toronto, mm -hmm. and some of the, these letters came from there as well. Okay. So um, this uh, particular fantasy um, uh, was uh, in my desk, and the police picked it up and showed it to each other. and. Um, during the raid and, and, and considered using it as evidence at, at my trial. Mm -hmm. So I do, uh, I did not do the car capture part, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but I do use all the ingredients mentioned in, in the letter. Intriguing. So it's cook me. Uh, and the gentleman goes on to request, I'm playing a little boy walking down the street. You drive up to me, stop, get out, and you put me into the trunk of your car and Slam it shut. When you get to your house, you take me down to the dungeon and lock me in a cell. In a few minutes, you bring me cookies and water, which I eat. After I've eaten the cookies, you tell me that they are made from little boys and describe in detail the preparations involved, describing in general what I will write below. You change me, bring me upstairs to show me tapes of previous meals, following which you take me to the kitchen tear my shirt off and tie my hands. You sit on my chest and take my pants off, leaving only my underwear. You probe and pinch and weigh and check for proportions. You then take me back into the cell. You moon me as you leave. The phone rings. Your ghoulish neighbor saw you bring me in. She loves to eat boys. So here's what I hear you saying over the phone. Hello? Pause. Oh, hi. Pause. Just fine. How are you? Pause. Oh, you saw him come in. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Of course I'm going to eat him. Don't I always? Pause. You always have a standing ovation. Pause. I'll probably barbecue him tomorrow night. <laughs> I'll have another guest coming. So he's a bit small. Well, he's about 80 pounds, but for three hungry women, you need 90. Pause. Yeah, there's a lot of waist, bones, and guts, and so on. Pause. I thought I'd start with a garden salad. Pause. I find the salad helps the meal go down easier. If you wish to, yes, potato salad would be nice to go with him. Pause. A big bowl is fine. Perfect. No, I have everything else. I have lots of beer. Pause. That's great. Just bring the potato salad and a big appetite. Come early so we can have cocktails before dinner. You make a second call and invite, and he gives the name my former dom. She'd love a portion. I listen in horror in the dark to the conversation and ad lib to the conversation. You come for me wearing only an apron, heels, bra, and panties. You pull me out and prod me up the stairs, mocking me on the way to the kitchen. You have me sit and take one last look, long look at the outside world as you read the recipe and check the ingredients out loud. You tease me with your panties as you do so. For the Mediterranean head cheese, the head is boiled and fermented with spice to make about 10 kilograms of cheese. Your neck will be scrap meat for my dogs. I'll follow a Russian recipe for the organs. Pickled liver, kidney hearts, and all other internal organs will also be used as pet food. I'll follow a Persian recipe, and I'll use chest and back meat for ground meatloaf, baked slowly and spice. I'll follow the Montana barbecue recipe for the buttocks. Rump roast, sliced off in one piece, <laughs> sent to age, and then roast. I'll follow the Greek recipe for the legs, stripping off all meat, marinating it. So let's see, I'll need one boy weighing 90 to 100 pounds, one red onion, one garlic clove, one liter of olive oil, one pepper, 500 milliliters of Worcester sauce, 200 grams of salt, 10 pounds of rice for optional stuffing, and one liter of hot barbecue sauce, and one apple for the boy's mouth to keep him quiet. I roast <laughs> him on this bit for three minutes for each pound, and he weighs to cook rare for four minutes per pound for medium. I will keep rotating and brush regularly. You then come to the cell, take me away. I beg and plead. I kiss your feet and legs if that's okay. I get dragged to the barbecue pit table. On the way, you have me stop in the bathroom for one last time. You drag me out, and once at the barbecue pit, I run for the door. You come for me slowly. You push me slowly with your body back to the table. You lie me down on the table next to the barbecue. Tie my feet and hands and blindfold me. You oil me with baby oil, season me with talcum powder, and wrap parts of me in saran wrap. <laughs> you then brush the sauce water on as you munch chips and drink beer. I beg for a beer. You laugh and tell me that soon I'll be swimming in beer. You put an apple in my mouth and put your panties on the pillow, and then you near my nose and cover my face with them. I hear muffled voices. You make jokes with the other ladies and so forth. Anyways, we can discuss the ending. <laughs> wow. Oh, that wasn't too long. That, no, was not that at okay? all. That was incredibly vivid. And, and I can only imagine the imagination of the person that would send you a letter like that. I can only imagine how good he's going to taste. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that with us. So we're going to take a short commercial break, and then we're going to come back afterwards to talk a little bit about Terry Jean Bedford's constitutional challenge to override the sex work laws, and maybe we'll get an opinion from her on what her favorite recipe for a you know, young, attractive blonde would be, because I would love to know what I would go well with in a stew. Anyways, stay tuned, and we'll be right back.